God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to God's Harbor for All Soul Church under the leadership and direction of Pastor Odell McFarlane III and Lady Robin. My name is Pastor Aaron Roberts. I am your teacher tonight. Amen. We are, this is our Wednesday night Bible study. Amen. And I'm excited and delighted to come forth with the word. Thank God for Pastor Mike and Pastor Dorothy Jones. Amen. They are uh, awesome teachers. They are our teachers on Wednesday night uh, Bible study. Do an awesome job. Appreciate them. Thank Pastor Mike for opportunity. He asked me to come forth on tonight. It was uh, honorable. It was honor, honorable uh, of him to ask me that, and I thank God for that. Uh, and we look forward to having a good time tonight. That's okay. Father God, we just thank you for your mercy and grace. We pray that you would just move on today. Have your way, Father God. I just thank you right now for your word, Father God. We pray that you just touch the people of God, do a new thing in their life right now, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We're going to go right into the word of God. Get your Bibles. Get ready to come on in. Tune in. Amen. Let somebody know. Tell somebody the good news. Tell somebody that we're on the, on the air. Amen. So uh, get your Bibles. Do the honor me. The eighth chapter of the first verse. We're going to go right into it. Amen. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply and go and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your father. Amen. There's three things I want to take out of there. But I want to say, well, let me start off with this. First of all, you know, to all the churches and to all you all that are, are, are buying by the, by the law, Let's continue to do that. Amen. It is, it is God's commandment to, for us to obey the law of the land. Amen. We might not like what's going on. We might not like the social media, but at the end of the day, we got to do what we have to do. Amen. So no soul get lost. We still minister in the word. We're still going forth, but we are in compliance with the law. We thank God, amen, for Jesus, for he's still making a way out of nowhere. He's still going to do it. He's still going to fix it. He's still going to heal the land. He's still going to do what he says he's going to do. I don't care if it's what, what it looks like right now. It's not what it looks like. Don't look at what the situation is, but look what God is, how God is going to bring us out, how he's going to deliver us, how he's going to set the captives free, how he's going to heal the sick. So don't you worry about what's going on right now. God is a way maker. He's a heart fixer. He would do, he would do all things but fail. So I am to encourage the church. Stay faithful, stay on the wall, stay connected, stay united, stay together. Amen. That's why I'm wearing my uniform today. Amen. Because I was once a coach and we coached, I coached two teams, uh, uh, my team to two championships and we won because we stayed connected. We was a team. They believed in me, I believe in them. There was no iron team, but it's definitely an iron win. And we 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 won together because we were fighting against we wasn't fighting against each other, but we were fighting to win a championship together. And that's what we did. So we as the church and the body of Christ, we cannot fight against each other. We must come together, united together, become a team, become one, become united. So we can defeat the enemy. Who is the enemy? It's not your brother. It's not your sister. It's the devil. It's the devil. Can I say that again? Your enemy is not your neighbor. It's not your brother or your sister. It's the enemy. It's the devil. He's the enemy. And that's who we're fighting against. So don't get it twisted. Amen. So let's keep going. Amen. So uh, uh, one of the... Uh, Three points I want to bring out of the first verse uh, that you may live and not die. I know a lot of people are dying. A lot of folks are losing their jobs, losing their mind, losing everything that they have. But I'm here to let you know that God got the best of you. You are not going to die. You are not going to. You're not going to be disconnected, dismayed, discouraged. I'm here to encourage you. I'm here to be your coach tonight. I'm here to to take you around the bases. You're going to hit a home run. You're not going to keep falling out. You're not going to keep striking out. You're going to get around the bases. You're going to make it happen, Captain. You're going to do it because God is in you. 
God said you should live and not die. So don't you get frustrated, bamboozled. Don't you get dismayed or discouraged. Don't let all them D words get in your mind. Don't get the devil out your mind. Because you are healed. You are highly favored. You are a child of God. And he says, if he said, it's going to be done. And number two, he said, multiply. In other words, you're going to get double for your trouble. Don't you be discouraged of what's going on right now. You might have lost your job, but guess what? Think about it. You got time at the house, at your home, in your quiet place. Listen, you ain't got to work for another person. God might want you to be your own boss. Sometimes it takes some things to happen for you to get to your next. Sometimes it takes you to lose something to gain something else. So this is your time of dispensation. Get before God. Write your vision down. Tell God what you want. Tell God what's on your heart. Let him know that you, you might want to be your own entrepreneur. Huh, you will be the one writing checks. Come on, somebody. And I'm not talking about bounce checks either. I'm talking about with some zeros behind it. So don't you let someone or anybody or somebody come into your ear and tell you, man, you ought to denounce God and die. You ought to say, I told you the God that you serve don't, is not there for you. Listen, the devil is a lie. <clears throat> God said he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Anything that you're going through right now, he knows that you, you can deal with it. He's not going to put nothing on you that you can't deal with. I dealt with a lot of things in life. I had a lot of ups and downs. But honey, I'm here to let you know that God brought me out of every one of them. He is a provider. I am a living witness. I know that God would put food on my table. We didn't have food on our table. God made a way out of nowhere. You heard me say it before and I say it again. I say it every time I can because I know God is a as a healer, I know God is a believer. I know God is a provider. He provided for us and my family. Amen. And I just continue to thank him. That's why we're fasting right now. This is why we're on our third day of fasting. We're going to conclude tonight. You know why? Because God is great. His mercy endure forever. We fast because we're fasting for this country, for this world, for this universe. Amen. It ain't for us. It's for the, we've, somebody else on their deathbed. We're fasting. We're calling out their name. We don't know who they are. We're just calling out names. We're fasting that, that God would do something, that he would heal the land. It is people saying, well, we don't fast no more. Well, the devil is a lie. Bible says some things come through fasting and prayer. And we've been praying. We've been fasting. We don't care what people are saying or what people are thinking. They can say, well, you're trying to be ugly, trying to be bigly. Hey, man, we ain't on that. Now. We ain't on that at all. We're just doing the will of God. Let God's will be done. And that's what you ought to be doing. Let the will of God be done. Possess the land. Take the land. Number three. We bring, bring me to number three. Possess the land. Take the land. The land belongs to you. That don't sound like you just playing petty case with the devil. He said possess the land. That means that you taking it by force. The Bible says the violent take it by force. You better take what belongs to you and stop playing with the devil. Let that devil alone. If he took what took took from you? Let him have it, because you got that's that's that he got greater works for you. He got greater things for you. He's got greater in store for you. So in other words, if he took that little bit from you, guess what? He got a bigger thing for you. Get ready, get ready, get ready to receive greatness. Walk into your greatness. Get ready to walk into you. Go over into your wealthy place. You better know who you are in today's society. You better know that you serve a king. You better know that you are a child of the king. You better know that you're a child of royalty. Come on, somebody. You better know that God, the God that you serve, the God that I serve, is the God that owns a cattle on a thousand hills. In other words, there is nothing that he will not hold from you. My God should supply all, not some. But all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, Philippians 4 and 19. You better know who you serve. It. You better know the word in this time. This is the time that you need to know what God is saying. You need to know the word. The word got to be in you, not on top of you, not out of you, but it got to be in you. Come on, somebody. 
<laughs> so when the word is in you, when the times like these happen, you're not going to be discouraged. You're not going to be discombobulated. You're not going to be disconnected with the word of God. You're not going to be disconnected with God because you know what his word is saying. If his word is said, he says he's more than the world against you. If he's for you, he's more than the world against you. So no matter what's going on in the world, God is with you. <laughs> you better You better take that. You better run with it. You better know that God is for you. Verse 2 says, And thou shalt remember all thy ways which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years. Listen, honey, it ain't going to take you 40 years to get out of your situation. I'm going to tell you right now, the devil is a lie. That was because the children of Israel was hard-headed, stiff-naked. They was disobedient. They kept going into witchcraft. They kept doing everything under the sun. But listen here, honey. I'm here to let you know God is bringing you out. And it ain't going to take long. This virus thing that's going on, this epidemic that's going on right now, it is not going to be going forever. It's just only for a season. <laughs> Weeping may do it for a night, but joy coming in the morning. This is your joy time, honey. Listen, you ought to be rejoicing and thanking God that you're alive, that you're saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, and that you're in your right mind. That's somebody that lost their mind right now because of the epidemic that's going on. But God kept you, honey. He kept you. This is your season. This is your time to reap every benefit, every benefit that God has for you. Hmm. But you must humble yourself. And he says, 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know that what's in thy heart. God would know what's in your heart, whether thy will keep his commandment or not. What is in your heart during this time of dispensation, during this time of epidemic, during this time right now? What is in your heart? Is it in your heart to serve God or is it in your heart to play church like a lot of folks are doing? See, God ought to get your attention. And this is not the time to play church. This is not the time to play games, to play patty cake with the play patty cake with God. Because God is not a God to play with. My mother told me all the time, you want to play with something, you better get you a dog, get you something. But don't you play with God. Don't you play with God. But you need to know who you are. And God, and know that if you will, if you truly in God, He's got you. He got you, honey. This is just for this this test here, just gonna be your testimony. The mess that you're dealing with right now, it's gonna be your message. So hang on in there. And I'm not talking about faking until you make it, because anything you fake until you make it ain't for real. It's counterfeit. It's counterfeit. It's not the real thing, honey. I don't want to fake anything. If I got to fake it, then I don't really not do it at all. People saying stuff, using cl cliches. They're just saying things of what they hear other folks saying. Faking it until you make it. Who's faking anything? Man, why you got to fake someone? You could be the real thing, honey. <laughs> I ain't got to fake anything. I'm who I am. I ain't trying to be like nobody. And I'm trying to talk, teach, to talk, or act like nobody. I'm, I'm who I am. So, so I'm not faking anything about nothing. Nothing is fake about me. That's another message by says, Let me get off that. But God wants us to keep his commandment. The children of Israel went through their test and their trial for 40 years, 40 long years. Didn't have to do it. They didn't have to do it. But because of their hard-headedness and their disobedience and because of their rebellion, they found themselves in a place that they shouldn't have been in. What should have took four days took 40 years. Huh, can you imagine that? This thing that's happening right now, this COVID-19, this the deadly disease, it ain't, it ain't, it's not going to happen forever. It's not going to be forever. It's just for a season. Weep a man, do it for a night, but joy, honey, comes in the morning. You better get you some joy. The Bible said, if you ain't got no joy, you better leap for joy. Because this is the season we're in right now. He's going to turn our sorrow to happiness. He's going to turn our sorrow to joy. <laughs> the things that we're dealing with right now, the lack that we, that, that, that we feel that we have, God is going to give us an increase. So you get ready. Get ready. Get ready. 
for God is ready to do it for you. I am excited because I'm crossing over to my wealthy place. I don't know about you, but I'm going to get there. That's why I got my uniform on today. I'm your coach today. Amen. I coached a team, my team, to two championships we won. Amen. Why? Because they believed in me. Why? Because they believed in coach. They knew what my values are. And they believed in me and I believed in them. Believe me, believe me, they, believe me, they believed in me. And believe me, you, honey, if you believe in God, God will do the same thing for you. Because when you think about it, we got to work this thing together. There's no I in team, but that's short of for I and win. And when we work together, we become a team and we win. We beat and we defeat the enemy. And everything that he do and every trick that he try to bring toward our way, we defeat him every time. Because why? We're united together. We're working together. It's what's in your heart, honey. It's what's in your heart, honey. Your heart got to be right. Your heart got to be clean. Your heart got to be right and your heart got to be clean. So God was putting the children of Israel through a test. Their trial was designed to get them to trust God. How many times did God had to come across to get their attention? Every time. He brought them out, though. He brought them out. They trust them for a minute, and then they went back to their old ways. That's just how we are sometimes. We trust them sometimes, then sometimes we don't. When the world get good, when things are good, we forget all about God. We forget about God that brought us this far. God has blessed us with our new home and our new car and our new job. But we forget about sowing our seed. We forget about serving God. We forget about prayer. We forget about fat, fasting. Oh, man, I just curse when I say the word fast. When we talk about fast, people don't want to fast no more. What is that? People don't do it. We don't fast no more. We don't push the plate no back no more. But we always want God. To heal us, to deliver us, to set us free. But there's no sacrifice on our part. When do we sacrifice? When do we push back? When do we stop feeding the flesh? Huh. When do we ever feed the spirit man? The spirit man is dying. Starvation. Feed me. That's what it's saying. I'm not getting the word. I'm not getting the word. The flesh is overtaking me. So soon we talk about fasting. People go into the quiet corner and you don't hear nothing from them anymore. But here, honey, I'm here to let you know. When you fast, it works. God do some miracles. There are some miracle signs and wonders working through fasting. Amen. My wife and I, we believe in fasting. That's why we do it. We do it because we believe it. And we know it works. God done it for us many, many, many times. Amen. We don't do it for showboat. Later for that, those days are over with. Amen. If you're doing things to, to please people, then you're in the wrong business. You're in the wrong business. All you people pleasers, all you showboat, all you all that want to want to try to please folks, you in the wrong business. But my 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 mind is made up, my heart is fixed. I am sold out to Jesus. I want to please God. I don't know about you. And when I please God, I know that He's gonna take me over to my wealthy place, just like He do it for me. He do it for you. So I'm here to coach you to let you know you getting around those bases. You're gonna hit a home run, honey. You're not gonna just gonna stop at first, but you're gonna move from first to second to third. You're gonna steal a third to get to get to get to home plate. You're gonna you're gonna get around those bases. You're gonna stop fouling out. <laughs> you're gonna stop striking out. This is your time. This is your season. It's time to the the break up your batting average. Come on, somebody. You've been batting. 100, this time to take it up to 350. Come on. It's time to, the time to stop swinging at the air. Stop letting the enemy beat you up. Stop letting the enemy strike you out every time you step up to the plate. Every time you step up, you strike it out. 
Every time you step up, you keep falling. You keep falling. You keep falling. You keep falling. Here, honey, I'm here to let you know and encourage you. I'm empowering you. Power to withstand the devil. You have the victory. The victory is in you. But you got to keep the faith. Which bring me to this. Which, which bring me to the trials was designed to get them to trust God, which is the, the, the Israelites. The victory in each aspect of temptation is solely based on your relationship with the Father. Let me say it again. Your victory in each aspect of temptation that you're dealing with is solely based on your relationship with the Father. If you have a relationship with the Father, then he has a relationship with you. In other words, he's your friend. He's your Father. He's your Lord. He's your Savior. He hears you. Not only that, not only that he hears you, he answers your prayers because you are commune with him. You have a bond with him. You have a, a love affair with him. <laughs> you are united with him. And when you have that type of faith, that level of faith, there will be nothing God will not do for you. Which determines your level of faith in Christ. Whatever determines, whatever you, de de you de desire to have in life, God will give you that because of the level of faith that you have in him. When you trust him, he trusts you with bigger and greater things. You know why you can't get things and you're not able to get to that wealthy place? Because God can't trust you with it. You can't do it, can't do good with the small things that you have right now. God bless you with a brand new car. You don't lost your mind. <laughs> you, you, you don't got boastful, prideful. You want everybody to see what you got. You pull you the first one in to park up in the front so folks can see that God bless you. Come on. Come on, people of God. See, I like the I like the word of God. What God does in secret, he will reward you openly. Listen here. I ain't got to be boastful and prideful. Listen, I ain't got to be the first one in for you to see my car or see what I have. Listen here. It works for itself. It'll speak for itself. When you cross over to that wealthy place, there won't be no pride in you because you will understand that it was a battle to get there. See, when you've got to fight for something, it makes you appreciate what you got. It makes you appreciate what you got. When you fight for something, it makes you walk in humility. It becomes, it makes you humble. Which take me to the third verse. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knew not. Neither did thy father know that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth, the Lord does man live. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, the source of the bread is more important than the bread itself in the scripture. See, God said, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. In other words, his word represents the spiritual food. His word represents the spiritual food. That's why that we can... If, if, if you understand the importance of the word of God, then he said like this in John 6 and 35. John 6 and 35 said, Jesus said to them, he who cometh to me shall never, can I say it? Can I say it? Can I say it? Can, shall never hunger, and he who believe in me shall never thirst. Honey, I'm here to let you know when you put your trust in God, you putting your trust in 
the hand of the man that can change everything and make every crooked road straight in your life. He said, you are never hungry, nor you shall you thirst. Now that's right there. I can take it to the bank. I'm excited about that because guess what? I never had to worry about food on my table. I told you the testimony. I didn't have it, but God made a way and he brought it. He, he supplied my needs according to the riches of glory in Christ Jesus. God did it for me. And he did it for me. He can do it for you. That's the kind of God we serve. So your lifeline is based on your obedience to his word. Your lifeline is based on your obedience to the word of God. Your faith in God will empower you to get to your wealthy place. Your faith, not my faith, your faith, because my faith, I already know where my faith is at. And my faith is not going to be shaken. It's not going to be moved. But I want to encourage you as the coach tonight to empower you to get to your wealthy place. You're going to get there. You're going to get there. Next time you bat up my God, they're going to know your name. They're going to respect you. They'd rather walk you than pitch to you because they know that the next time you get up, you're going to clobber that thing. You're going to knock it out the park. You got the victory. The victory is in you. The power I'm talking about is the ability to produce wealth. The power of wealth. During this deadly epidemic, folks are dying. I know folks are losing their jobs. Folks are losing their mind. But God Almighty has given you the peace in the midst of the storm. No matter what is going on around you, you have the peace of God. Why? Because Isaiah 26 and 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace with those that keep their mind. Sweat. Stay on him. In other words, you got to trust God right now. This is the only way that we're going to get out of this epidemic, this, this, this situation. You got to trust God. You got to know God as your Lord and Savior. Not in, that, not in man, but in God. Not in the doctors, but in God. Huh. Not in your mother and father, sister and brother, but in God. Trust God all the way. Listen, honey, you've been tried through the fire. And you have weathered the storm. You're going to come out as pure gold, just like the Hebrew boys. Come on, they went through the fire, but there was not a stench, not a burn, not even a smoke on them. They was Brought out as brand new, as if they just went through one door to it went to one throw to another door, and that's the same thing God's gonna do for you, honey. I'm here to encourage you on tonight that He's gonna take you for one door. If one door is closed, He's gonna open up another door. If one window is shut, He's gonna lift up another window. Come on, honey, you gonna get to your wealthy place. Stand, just stand, 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 stand. After you did all you can do, stand. God said, now is the time to cross over to your wealthy place. I prophesy to all you all that are listening to me on tonight. Your ladder shall be greater than your former. Listen to what I'm saying, honey. God said it to Job, just like he said it to Job, it's going to happen to you. You're going to get double fold for your trouble. I don't care what you're dealing with. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what anybody said. But God said that you got the victory and you already won the race. Huh. So I prophesy to all y'all, all you all that are listening to my voice, that your ladder shall be greater than your form. So get ready, get ready, get ready, honey. Get ready to move to your next. Come on, I'm excited. I'm excited. I am excited for what God is going to be doing. For not only for me, but for what his people and to his people. God is going to bless you like never before. This is your time. This is your season. I know you've been going through, honey. I know that things been rough. I know it has not been easy all the time, but you stayed in the race. You didn't give up. You kept the faith. 
Psalm 66 and 12 says, Psalm 66 and 12 says, Thou have caused man to ride over your head, over our head, over your head, over our head. We went through fire and through water, but thou brought us out into a wealthy place. So I'm here to let you know you're going to get to your wealthy place. I don't care who's over your head. I don't care who's who's your boss. I don't care who's telling you what, who's trying to control you, who's trying to dictate to you. Listen, God has the first and the last soul. He is Alpha and Omega. He is, he is, he is our Lord and Savior. He's the first and the last. You're going to rise up to the top. Get ready. Get ready to cross over to your wealthy place. I don't know about you, but today is a new day. This is a new season. Get ready. This is a new day. A new day is coming your way. Out with the old. In with the new. I say out with the old. The old thinking that you used to have. That old stinking thinking that you used to have. Out with that. But in with the new. Come on. There's going to be some new refreshing. Some new air, some new air they're going to breathe into your pipelines. This is my prayer tonight. My prayer, Lord Jesus, help me to be more like you. I want to be more like you, Lord. I want to be more like you. I want to walk like you. I want to do the things that you did. Lord, I want to be more like you. I want to talk like you. I want to act like you. I want everything to all the abilities that you have given me to, to have on this earth. I want it. <laughs> Give it to me, Lord. I want it. I desire it. You should want it. You should desire it. You're going to come across. You're going to get across that land. You're going to walk across that wealthy land. You're going to get over to that, to that wealthy place. And it's not going to take 40 years to get there. Remember what I said? We may do it for a night, but joy coming in the morning. And tonight, God is bringing some joy. Tonight, your morning time has come. Get ready, get ready. You are a new person. You are a new creature, creator, a creature in God. When you wake up in the morning, you begin to get up and tell God who you are and thank God for who he is and begin to decrease some things in your life and over your family life and over your children life. Begin to tell God that I am unique. I am a child of you and you will Take care of me. I am a child of God. I am your child. I I should not settle for, for less. I should not let this epidemic, this thing that's going on in this world, be my God and be in a place, or put me in a place that I am defeated. You are not defeated, honey. You have the victory. I'm here to encourage you. Stay in a race. Stay suited up. Stay before God. Stay faithful unto him. Continue to walk by faith and not by sight because it's not what you see. It's not all about what you see. It's what you and who you believe in. And I believe in God. And God is my father. And he shall lead me through all truth and righteousness. And I thank God for you and for all you all that's listening on tonight. I just want to encourage you. Get ready, get ready. Be ready to take take back everything that the enemy thought he stole it from us. Because he did steal it from you. It's just this laying dormant temporarily until you get your act together. God just waiting on you. Believe in God. Practice using wisdom. And all you're getting, get an understanding. Use wisdom. Stay safe. Remember, faith without works is dead. And I'll leave you with that. God bless you. You're crossing over to your wealthy place. I'm standing on it. 
I believe God for you, and I know he's going to do it. I love you. The love of the Lord continue to stay in the race, stay in the, stay faithful unto God, and know that God is going to do it. He's going to fix it. He's going to work it out. I'm Pastor Aaron Roberts, and I am so delighted to pray the word to you, to all you all that are listening on social media. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you and your family. I want to pray for all those that uh, are not saved and you desire and you don't have a relationship with the Father. Tonight, you can do that. You can have that relationship. You at the right time, at the right place to hear the right word. All you have to do is just ask the Lord to come into your heart. Lord, forgive me for my sins. Lord, I believe you died on the cross and you rose on that third day. Lord, I want to be saved. Save me, Jesus. That's it. All you have to do is confess your faults and believe in your heart. Then you're saved. It's that simple. If you prayed that prayer and you repeated those words, you're not saved. It's just that simple. Now you a child of God. Now you a child of royalty. You can ask God anything that you desire. You made that commitment. If you make, if you make that commitment to, to, to God, God will make that commitment to you. So thank God you're saved now. Father God, we just thank you for all those by way of social, social media. Father God, we just pray that you will just continue to touch and that you would continue to reach out to the people, Father God, heal the land, deliver the land, set your, set your people free, set the captivity free, Father God. Father God, we pray for all those that are, that are uh, a victim of the coronavirus. Father God, I pray, Father God, for all the families, Father God. I pray, Father God, you will bring peace. Father God, I pray, Lord, that you would just bring peace right now, Father God. Father God, that you would just, oh, Father God, wrap your arms from around, uh, around them. Show them love, Father God. And Father God, I just pray right now, Father God, you will bring comfort right now, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, those that are in the hospital, I pray for a quick recovery. I pray for a quick healing. Heal their body right now, Father God. Take them out of ICU, Father God. Father God, we pray that you would just heal the land right now, Father God. Father God, I pray that you would do a quick work, Father God. Deliver your people, Father God. Heal your people right now, Father God. Set your people free, Father God. And Father God, we just thank you right now. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. And we give you all the praise and all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. And we want to continue to be a blessing. Amen. We ask that you continue to sow your seed. Amen. There are several ways that you can sow your seed. Amen. As you see on the monitor right there, uh, three ways you can sow your seed. Continue to sow. Amen. We thank God for all those that have been sowing, that have been tithing, that have been sowing a seed. Amen. You've been a blessing to the church. Amen. The doors are still open. Amen. Amen. The lights are not shut off. God, thank God the gas has not been shut off. Amen. The bills have been paid and been taken care of. Why? Because of you. Amen. Although we're not there physically, but the bills have been taken care of and the door, doors are still open. And we thank God for you being faithful into the ministry, for you sowing your seed. Continue to do that. We are thankful and grateful, and uh, we just uh, appreciate you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We thank you on tonight for tuning in to God's Harbor for All Soul Church. Amen. Under the direction of Pastor Odell uh, III and Lady Robin, we want to uh, say thanks to you, and I want to thank you, amen, for tuning in once again. 
Uh, my name is Pastor Aaron, Aaron Roberts. God bless you. I love you. Take care. Have a blessed evening. Until next time, we'll see you soon. Bye now.